this is Denise Pratt with Boys Town National Training. And um, as we kind of into this new reality of ours, one of the things that we're wanting to do is, is just share some information, just some tips, if you will, on um, some good strategies, some things to use, especially we've all got uh, spending more time together in our own homes. And, and as we know, you put a lot of uh, siblings together, kids together. And you're going to have behaviors. You're going to have behaviors that you like, but you're also going to have behaviors that you don't like. So what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today is just the, the power and the, and the value of reinforcing kids. So when we reinforce, I, I want you to think about there's just some strategy here. So why would we praise? First, to change behavior. We want to see more of certain behaviors. We want to see less of other behaviors. So. Uh, one of the things that we do is we just kind of lean in on using reinforcement or using praise to, to emphasize those behaviors that really do have value, that we want to see more of. Um, some things that we always want to remember is that kids are learning. They're, they're just not fully formed when they get to us. So there's a lot of things that they're not good at. And as they're developing their, their, their behaviors, their, their skills, um, when, when interacting with other people and interacting with parents and interacting with adults, those kind of things, uh, we want to help guide them. We want to help them understand that certain behaviors are working well or um, behaviors that aren't. So one of the things that we want to think about not only is why we praise, but how we praise. It does matter. So one of the things that I would encourage you to think about is just Make sure your praise is genuine. So we think about, uh, we don't praise kids for things that are very common for them. They really think about it. It's really become part of their, who they are as a person. Um, that's usually the, the, the reinforcers, if you will. The reason why they keep doing that behavior is because they really started to consider that just, I don't know, part of their personality, who they are. I am kind. I am, um, I'm really good at reading. I would do that without a lot of um, intervention or help from, from, my, from my parents. Um, but there are behaviors that are hard, they're developing, they're still figuring them out. And those are the ones that we want to say, I did notice your effort on that. I noticed you tried hard. And we want to give them credit for that. So, um, I really want to, uh, it might sound something like, you know, thanks for waiting until, thanks for clearing your place and um, getting your dishes in the sink with the dishwasher. Uh, it might sound something like, uh, I know it's hard to ignore a comment like that, but you did a really nice job of, nice job. So we want to be genuine. Notice I also was specific and there's, there's value to that. I'm not just going to say, oh, goodness, nice job, because I'm trying to help them see which part was valuable so that they could do it again. So it might sound something like, um, you know, thanks for, um, you, you did a beautiful job of, of doing your morning chores. You got your teeth brushed. You uh, got your bed made. Love it. Yes. We want to have more positive interactions with our kids than, than negative or corrective conversations with, with kids. So um, one of the things we strive for, we know there's going to be behavior. And we know if we don't address the positive behaviors, we will have to address the negative behaviors. So um, we, get, we shoot for a four to one ratio, four positive interactions with kids uh, for every correction that we have to do. And again, that's what we're striving for. Some days we're going to hit it. You know, some days we might say, oh, it's hard. Well, there was too much Easter candy. There was too much, um, not enough time. The weather wasn't, wasn't good and, and kids needed exercise. It wasn't our best day. Uh, but overall, striving for that four to one ratio. Finally, one of the things we'd want to do is, is give reasons. Because ultimately, we're trying to teach kids to be to be self-managers, kids that choose behavior whether an adult is there or not. And in order to do that, they need to know why. 
And we don't have to tell kids why for everything we, we ask them to do. But if we're really trying to teach, if we're really trying to develop a child, then yes, we would give them the reason for it. So um, you did a nice job of uh, sharing, making sure that your sister had a ch chance to, to play the game too. And when you share like that, when you, when you take turns, the game is more fun for everybody. People are more likely to want to, want to play, spend time with you. When you, um, when you pick up your toys and make sure that all the, the balls in your bike get into the garage, um, it's more likely to be where you can find it tomorrow. It's, it's less likely to get um, wet in the, caught in the rain, wet, rusted. It'll be in better shape when you want to use it again. So we just give those reasons. And again, sometimes we have to think about them. We, we know innately that these are important, but sometimes we have to think about why is it important. And that's okay to do that. Um, for those behaviors that you're like, this one's really developing. This one is still, um, it, 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 the child isn't good at it yet. Being honest, <laughs> making sure that they, um, they, they, take turns, making sure that they, um, you know, remembering when I, when I tell you something that you don't like, I have to tell you no. If you can accept that, I'm going to, and actually not just me, other folks as well, will we'll try harder to get you yes answers when they can. Notice how I, I generalize that. It's not just about me. The truth is interactions with, uh, with others have some pattern to it some predictability, if you will. People are more likely to be around people that are pleasant to be around. They're more likely, they work harder at trying to uh, make, take extra effort um, if they know that that person is meeting them halfway. And that's really what we're trying to teach children. So just to review, first of all, we praise just to increase the positive behaviors and, and to help um, teach children, help guide them as they develop behaviors, their, um, their skills in, in the world as they grow. And why or how do we praise? Well, we first want to be genuine. We want to be um, generous with our praise. Let's shoot for that four to one ratio. We want to give reasons when, the, when behaviors are particularly difficult. And um, I would note, just one side note, that Sometimes when we say, "Gosh, I can't find anything that I could reinforce the child," always remember if you've got some, if you've got more than one child, if you've got siblings, you can praise the one who is doing it right. And a lot of times, there's there's um, there's impact there as well. There's power in that, in noticing who is doing the right thing, instead of putting all of our attention, all of our energy towards the the child that is not doing what they should do. So. Um, Always remembering you can you can praise others. So uh, genuine, specific, give reasons. And if we're using those strategies, our, our homes are become easier to spend. Our kids get um, better at being uh, the enjoyable kids. And, and certainly that's what we're striving for, teaching them how to learn and grow. OK. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we. Look forward to talking to you again and thank